Welcome to our homestead. This is part two. We want to give you a tour of what we've done in the last two months. The, the introduction showed what we did two months ago, and we've got a lot done in the last two months, and that's what we'll look at here today. So come on and take a look. One of the main things we're doing here is making a forest garden. And in our area of Thailand, this would be considered a tropical forest garden. And that's what I've been doing the most work on for the last two months. So let's just go around and take a look at what we've been doing. One thing we've done is we've added fruit trees along our driveway here. This is a type of apricot tree. They get very large and this will help shade the driveway. Also it looks good as you pull in the front gate here. We've built a trench that drains down to the back of our property. And what this does, it diverts the excess water that's coming off of the high part of our land. You remember in the introduction, we, we added road base for this part up here. So it's above the forest garden. Well, this, this road base slopes this way, and we don't want all that extra water on the garden. Because here, uh, flooding is a big problem. So we've got this trench here. It's starting to fill in already, because we had a, a huge rain two nights ago. And then you notice this big berm. It's a two meter by 20 meter berm. This is an experiment with road base and soil mixed together. And this is for plants that like to be raised off up above the ground. They prefer better drainage. So we have papaya, peanuts, different things up here. And again, this helps block that water that's coming off of this road base. Now we have pathways between all of our forest garden beds about one meter wide, we've covered with rice holes. If you look closely, you can see where grass is starting to come up. Eventually, all the pathways will be covered with uh, native grass that just grows naturally. But in the meanwhile, we have rice holes so we, we don't have to walk in the mud. Okay. Now, over here along the street, we have what we call a tree belt. And it looks similar to the other forest garden beds, but actually it's unique. It'll be primarily as a visual barrier to create a little privacy from people driving by. We also have larger trees here on this north side. We don't want the big trees like uh, tamarind to, to cause or create shade on the other parts of the garden. We also have some nice flowers here at the front gate. Okay, well let's just look look here at this bed. Now what we're doing is different than most forest gardens. This is a tropical forest garden and in the dry season we get almost seven months of virtually no rain and it gets very very hot and dry. So you need some way to shade the fruit trees or basically they'll just get baked. So we've added lots of plants like banana trees, banana plants, in between the main fruit trees. And this will help uh, create shade and protect the more vulnerable fruit trees. We have maybe about 20, 30 different kinds of fruit. Now we're not finished. This is a work in progress. This is only after two months. And over the next two or three years, we'll gradually add all the different layers of a forest garden. There are seven layers all together. So what we're doing here is just getting things started. All the trees, the main planting is finished. But now we have to start doing all the smaller plants. So here, we're starting to add some vegetables here and there. This is Malabar spinach. Just lots of different fruit trees. 
sugar apple, jackfruit, just about every fruit tree you can think of, and some flowers. We have trenches. They're a little hard to see because the rain filled them up. But on each side of the pathway, we have trenches that slope this way to help drain off the excess water. Is this and in a heavy rain? This will, you know, get covered in water. Come down this way. So each forest garden bed is about four meter by seventeen meter. All different kinds of fruit trees. Every forest bed is different. This is just a native vegetable, easy to grow. We have beans, again more bananas. And after three years, a lot of these bananas will be taken out as the main fruit trees get larger. See, so it's, it's always evolving. You have to think ahead, what will it look like in several years, five years, ten years, and beyond. So here you see the grass filling in nicely on this pathway. Here's a little experiment with some road base. We're trying to raise this up with some peanuts. They're just starting to come up. So a lot of the plants are small. They may be hard to see. We have some insect problems. There's no cold weather to keep the insects in check. Here we have some pineapple, different things. In the back over there, we have some chopped coconut dust. We use that in the mix to plant the trees. Help retain moisture. Now these two beds are further along than these others. So you see they look better. Now here we have uh, azuki beans. We planted as a ground cover. We won't harvest the beans. When they flower, we'll chop and drop. It's a way to hold the soil, reduce erosion, and then also build the soil. As you, you may remember from part one, this is really just clay subsoil that we've raised about two feet. And of course, you need something to build up the soil to create a productive garden. So over the months and years, we'll, we'll add more plants to build the soil. Now some of these beans are small. This is an area where it's low lying so too much water builds up right here so this is a little problem we'll have to raise eventually again everything's a work in progress here's our big mound of rice hulls we got real cheap from the rice mill we bought everything uh, several things rice hulls uh, rice hull ash which is same as biochar And eventually we'll probably buy other products such as bran for giving to the worms. We, have, we want to have uh, earthworms. Here we have a ground cover. We want to experiment with many different things. Now the trees are planted in between. And other plants are in between. Here we have eggplant. This ground cover, again, is maybe in about two months we'll, we'll chop and drop again to build the soil. So just have to keep replanting more and more things. We just, it's a continual process of just adding more and more plants. See, our corn's already quite big. And over the years, it will just become more and more dense. You see some of the ground cover here got knocked down from the heavy rain two nights ago. 
Now here's one of my favorite trees, Moringa. This is doing nicely. This is the most, this is the healthiest plant in the world that I know of. It's, I try to eat some every day. It's a little bit bitter, but you can put it in salads, you can put it in curries, where you don't even notice the flavor too much. But it's just packed with all kinds of nutrients. It's amazing. Look that up on the internet if you haven't heard of it. So just lots of things. We have uh, black pepper over there. Okay, we can go look at our, our shade house. This is something I mentioned in part one. Well, now the shade house is finished. Let's take a look at that. We'll have a nursery for potting our plants at one end. This end down here we'll have for our earthworm bed. We bought pre-made concrete posts. We have a wide base. You just dig a hole, set them in, plumb them. Very easy to work with and just bolt it on some steel for the roof, for the rafters. We're using this shade cloth. We have a double layer of shade cloth over the worm bed. Keep the worms cool, which we haven't built yet, but that's coming up soon. And then the other part down there is just one layer of shade cloth. Okay, the worm bed be right here. And if it's successful, we'll enlarge it Maybe make another one over here. There'll be a pathway down the middle. So it'd be about about one meter wide, about this deep. And eventually we'll put the compost on the garden. Again, we need to add different things to the soil because we're just starting out with mostly subsoil. So we want to add ground covers, different plants to build up the soil. The earthworms are part of that. And then eventually, we'll put some of the worms actually in the garden. But at first, we'll just let the worms multiply and just take their compost and their worm tea, the, the dripping and the casting, and put that on the garden. We also have trees and different plants all around the perimeter. They're hard to see, but they're, they're taking off really fast. Just different kinds of beans, corn. There are two neem trees, a little mulberry cutting. We just took a little piece of a mulberry branch and just stuck it in the ground, that's it. And already in about two months, it's uh, putting out some leaves, looks pretty good. And again, this is all around the perimeter of our property. We have dozens, dozens of little trees like this started. We started with our trees because they take the longest. And mulberries, we've learned a very good technique with the mulberries. What you do is they shoot up basically a real tall, skinny trunk and you want to keep them topped off. Don't let them get too big so that the fruit is easily within reach. Then after they produce their fruit, you cut it off down low, then they start to fork. And then each season they produce, you know, an additional shoot that shoots up and pretty soon, you know, you have multiple shootings, multiple branches basically shooting up you get more and more fruit this way. So these can be highly productive. And again, all of our trees are, will be trimmed, our fruit trees, so everything's easy to access. Over here we have our pump house. We used earth bags, just like our round house, pantry and dome. And this is built exactly like an emergency shelter. You can Google our search engine earth bag emergency shelters. We've been working on these ideas for a few years. Uh, 
this is exact replica of what we've been proposing for emergency relief like for the United Nations and NGOs for disaster areas. So now we have a prototype we can actually make a whole separate video on this. We'll show you exactly how we did each step. But for now you can see the basics here. We're using shade cloth to protect the walls. See the bags need to be protected from ultraviolet. The sunlight will break down the bags after about a few weeks. So we've draped shade cloth and we didn't plaster right away because the we wanted to make sure the soil in the bags was you know thoroughly dry. So we'll wait until the end of the rainy season, make sure everything's dry. We use salvaged or recycled wood for the roof, salvaged roofing tile. This whole thing is super cheap, maybe hundred, two hundred dollars. And again it's for our pump house. We we're starting off with a an old small pump until next season, until the dry season, then we'll get the full, you know, large size when we actually start to irrigate the garden. Okay. Here's that trench again. Get rid of the water. You can look over the fence here and see Those are the, the rice fields on every side of our property. So obviously you can't grow fruit trees and garden vegetables in standing water like this. So that's this, this area here, this land here was a rice field, like we explained in the first video, so that we could have buildings, a forest garden, and it's a way to take low-cost land and make it much more productive. Rice has actually very low potential as far as profit. So here we have a little garden area and this continues on around the edge of the property. These logs will be moved and in a few months we're going to build a barn right here. It'll be a storage area little workshop, maybe an extra bathroom. So those of us working in the garden that get real muddy, keep all the dirt out here. Here's our temporary shade structure. You know, it looks bad, but see it's low cost, virtually free. These are just eucalyptus poles, recycled wood, old recycled metal. And the wood that was scattered all over at the beginning of our first video, it's all gone. It's all used on our house. And the excess has been stored back here. We're using recycled materials as much as possible. These are the recycled roofing tiles. These are concrete roofing tiles called MCR, micro concrete roofing tiles. These are like 20 years old, 25 years old. So we're reusing those on parts of the house, on the pump house. And they, like I said, the extra wood is back here under cover. It all has value. We'll all use it. We'll use it eventually on the barn. Here are those extra posts. These are the ones that cost $100 a piece. These are like, like steel. <laughs> incredibly heavy and hard wood. The insects won't touch it. And we'll use these for the post and beam frame on the barn. Okay. We've run some temporary electrical to the pump house. I don't know if you can see this. Eventually this will be moved along the fence over here. It'll run from the house to the barn over to the pump house. Right now we're just stretched it temporarily across the road, across the driveway here. Okay. Here's the back of our house. This is the bathroom. We'll do the house in detail 
in the next part, in part three. So we'll just walk around this way and show you the kitchen garden in front. And this is coming along nicely all along the perimeter there. We have all kinds of plants, different vegetables, papaya, flowers, beans, many, many different herbs and things. Very happy with that. Okay, well that's all for part two. Uh, stay tuned for part three. We'll talk about how we built our recycled wood house. Thanks for watching.